Hi there! Welcome to another episode of Legal Tips at Your Fingertips. This is Attorney Chato Olivas, and this is part 3 of our series entitled Your Top 15 Personal and Legal Documents. If you want to watch parts 1 and 2 of this series, the links are in the description below. In parts 1 and 2, we discuss 10 of these 15 documents that you must keep safely and within reach in case of an emergency or immediate need. These 10 documents are Number 1. Civil Registry Documents Number 2. Passport and Travel Documents Number 3. Real Estate Documents Number 4. Financial Documents 5. Vehicle Registration Documents 6. Licenses 7. Insurance and Related Documents 8. Powers of Attorney 9. Last Will and Testament and 10. Medical Records At the end of this video, I have a bonus section where I will talk about different storage solutions that you can consider. In this video, which is Part 3, we will talk about the following. Academic Records Professional and Employment Records Identification Cards Lists and Inventories and Valuables For Category 11, let's talk about Academic Records. You need to keep academic records because these are needed in pursuing higher studies, applying for certain professional positions, and for immigration purposes, among others. Academic records include report cards, transcripts of records, diplomas, and certificates. You may also want to include file copies of applications, especially if these contain an extensive list of awards, recognitions, and commendations. These will serve as your documentation and could be a good reference later on. Photographs of medals, awards, and milestone events such as graduation and awarding ceremonies would also be good to keep. So here is your checklist. Report cards, transcript of records, diplomas, certificates, applications, medals, awards, photographs of graduation, awarding ceremonies, and other milestones. The 12th category would be professional and employment records. Your professional records can include copies of your professional licenses and accreditations, awards and commendations, membership certificates, or records in professional organizations. Also, have copies of your resumes and update these as the need arises. Employment documents should include your employment contracts, pay slips or summary of salaries received, deductions from salary, and awards and citations. Here's our checklist. Professional licenses, accreditations, membership in professional organizations, awards and commendations, resume. Category number 13 would be identification cards. You may also want to keep a file of your past and present identification cards. For those that you use and which you bring with you all the time, such as your driver's license, you can keep photocopies here. This will come in handy if you lose the identification card and need a replacement. Besides your driver's license, these ID cards include your social security card, tax identification card, voter's ID, residency card, and passport. The latter two may already be included in your file of passports and travel documents, but photocopies can be included here as well. Also include school ID, employment ID, membership ID in clubs, organizations, and associations. Here's your checklist. Social security, driver's license, residency card, passport, school ID, Employment ID, Membership ID. For Category 14, we have Lists and Inventories. I advise you to put together lists and inventories of important items and information for ready reference. This can be classified into subcategories and written in index cards. You can also include passwords and personal identification numbers or PIN for bank accounts, internet accounts, safe combinations, motor vehicle license plate and registration numbers, 
contact details of close relatives and key persons such as your doctor, lawyer, and accountant. I also recommend making an inventory of your important items, writing down their serial numbers, and including warranty cards and information as well. Instead of a plain list, you can take pictures of these items, write down their serial numbers beside or at the back of the pictures, and put these together with their warranty cards in a clear book. You will just have to update the clear book as the need arises. Here's your checklist. Passwords and pins, safe combinations, motor vehicle license plate and registration numbers, contact details of close relatives, contact details of key persons such as doctor, lawyer, accountant, photo file of important items with serial numbers and warranty cards. For category 15, we have valuables. This last category does not refer to documents but to actual items that are valuable to you such as heirloom pieces, jewelry, firearms, duplicate or spare keys, photos, compact discs, thumb drives, or digital storage devices. This may also include items that are sentimental such as letters, keepsakes, and souvenirs. Here's your checklist. Heirloom pieces, jewelry, firearms, duplicate or spare keys, photographs, compact discs, thumb drives, digital storage devices. To complete this series of videos, I would also like to talk about where to keep these documents and items. There are a variety of storage solutions depending on the items that are being stored and your purpose and your budget. There is no one-size-fits-all solution, so it is for you to decide which ones are most adequate. I believe that a combination of these different storage solutions will be required given the type of document or item to be stored. Before deciding on your customized storage solutions, let us examine your options. Number one, safety deposit box in your bank. This is a metal box with a lock that is stored inside a bank vault. It is owned by the bank and is rented out to clients. If you rent one, the bank will give you a key which you use to access your box. You can choose whether to allow access only to you or to you together with a specified person in which case the box can be opened only when both of you are present. Since the safety deposit box is inside the bank, you can access it only when the bank is open. This is a good storage solution for important documents and items that you do not need often such as jewelry, heirloom pieces, and the like. You should also decide if you want a safety deposit box near your office or near your home. Annual rental rates vary depending on the size of the box. Next, fireproof safe at home. If you would like to keep some of your documents at home because you want to have them easily at hand, your best option would be a fireproof personal safe. Home safes come in different sizes and a common size would be 1.2 to 1.3 cubic feet. This size could fit a 12-inch high stack of short bond paper. There are several factors to consider in buying a safe. These are number 1. Fire resistance. The degree of fire resistance has to do with the type of item that you would like to store in your home safe. A Consumer Reports article cited that for documents, the inside temperature of home safes should not exceed 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius. For CDs and DVDs, the maximum inside temperature should not be more than 125 degrees. Number two, water resistance. This will protect your items against floods or water damage from fire hoses. Number three, the cost of the safe. You could buy home safes for as low as 50 US dollars to as high as 1,000 US dollars. Various kinds of fireproof personal safes are available online. You must also consider where to put the safe. You might decide to put it in the master's bedroom or basement or a specially built space in your home office. You must study which of these is most secure based on the design of your home. And the last thing to consider about safes 
is what are you going to put inside? Will it be documents only? Or will you include heirloom pieces, firearms, CDs, or jewelry? Choose a safe that can adequately fit all the items that you would like to store. The third storage option would be a filing cabinet at home. There are two types of filing cabinets, vertical and lateral. Vertical filing cabinets are most common with two to four drawers requiring a small floor space. Lateral cabinets require more wall space and some are even designed to look like wooden cabinets. There are also mobile filing cabinets that are handy because you can easily move them around and make them fit under desks. What do you consider when choosing a filing cabinet? First, you have to think of how much floor space you would like to allot and where in your house you would like to put it. Second, how many documents are you going to put in the filing cabinet? And third, if you decide to put it in your living room or some visible area of your house, how does it look together with your furniture? Take a look also at the locking mechanism for added security where it is needed. Your fourth storage solution would be a regular cabinet at home. This is also good to consider, but think of security. What kind of lock do you put? And how sturdy is the cabinet itself? You may opt for creative designs like storage cabinets hidden beside a painting, under bed storage, or other creative spaces. Number five, digital storage. Digital storage is a good option for it is easy to bring in an emergency, but your hard copies must be stored in a safe place such as a safety deposit box in a bank. This can take the form of compact disks, thumb drives, or external drives. Cloud storage is also an excellent option, but this should only be a backup because you need to be able to have access even when there is no internet. Make sure you put in the necessary features to keep the content secure in case the storage device gets into the wrong hands. Number six, off-site storage for documents. This is to be considered if you choose digital storage because you've got to keep your hard copy somewhere. Factors in choosing off-site record storage include quality of the storage facility, types of storage facilities available, safety from water damage, climate control because humidity and temperature might have an effect on your documents, fire control system, records management system, cost, other services such as scanning and shredding. Now you can organize all your documents in 30 days. Don't be overwhelmed. You, may, you will only do it once and then just update later. And you can take the first step today. To watch more videos that will help you in your studies and in life, subscribe to my channel. If you are a law student, you can read more about civil procedure in my virtual textbook which you can find at www.profchato.com. And for inspiration, let me share my favorite Bible verse from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God.